welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal. Tuesday, 11 o'clock. You know, Thanksgiving seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? But we're still in the festive mood and we're talking about traditions. We're celebrating things that mean a lot to us, um, whether it's family or friends or traditions. Now, I'm talking traditions because I want to talk about the concept of how things change sometimes with traditions. Sometimes people dare to break the norm. Sometimes people dare to just change things after being a set for so many years. You know, changing a side dish on your Thanksgiving meal is not going to kill the meal. When we come down to our lives, what happens when you do change? It shakes up things. Come on, Trump's here. Things are going to change. Oh my God, are they? So what do we do when we face change and why do we actively or proactively decide to change things that have been set for so long? Today, we're going to talk about this through this artistic path of our wonderful guest today, uh, Pam Tong, who is the Artistic Director of Bally Hawaii. Welcome, Pam. Thank you, Crystal. Nice Lovely to be Lovely to hear you, see you here. And I wish I could have seen you on the days when you were dancing at the Atlantic <laughs> Ballet. Atlanta Ballet Atlanta was a uh, uh, wonderful experience that I had for 10 years of my life. My daughter also danced in many of the productions in, in Nutcracker, of course. We moved into the Fox Theater every December and we did at least 35 performances of Nutcracker throughout the month. Which and that's Atlanta Ballet, the right, Fox Theater, right. in the middle of downtown Atlanta. So you mentioned Nutcracker, because this is what we're going to end up going back to, is the Nutcracker mm -hmm. here at Ballet Hawaii mm -hmm. that's coming up. Yes. But the Nutcracker you did then, was it traditional? Was it the classic? Very traditional. My director was Robert Barnett, and he was one of the original members of the New York City Ballet with Mr. George Balanchine. Oh, wow. And so we were, we were allowed to do Mr. Balanchine's version of the Nutcracker. So that, I did that for 10 years, and it was most wonderful experience. We always had beautiful costumes and sets and an orchestra, and it was a time in Atlanta when businesses wanted to have a quality of life for their employees. And so we were just... Um, always given the best of the best as far as costumes and You sets. mentioned that your daughter danced with you. Yes. Tell me yes, about that. Yes, she did. That was... Was that you one, and your daughter that, that was doing the splits? That was my daughter and I. And, That's great. And the magazine did an article on Nutcrackers and they happened to choose us and that's a picture and that's you of in the back? my daughter <laughs> and my back, yes. Why couldn't they show your face? You could have had a little <laughs> Well, they were doing it on, um, and they called, the Balanchine version calls Clara Mary. And so oh. that was what they were focusing on is the different Nutcrackers around the country. And so that's how they happened to do a, um, a number of pages on us. What was really funny is that they had a picture of uh, the two of us cooking, <laughs> which was not my biggest uh, forte. forte. <laughs> hey, you point can't be shoes, good at everything. Yes, point shoes were baked in the oven so that it hardened. Oh. So that's what's for dinner, Mom. <laughs> but So we had a wonderful time in, in Atlanta nice at the ballet. Very wonderful memories. When you say it was traditional, you were doing the same thing every year. You look forward to that, but at the same time, did it become tiresome? Never. Or, never. <laughs> I just sit there before I even finish the sentence. No. That's, that's no, it was uh, the balancing choreography, I think, was so beautiful. It was never tiring, and there was always something new to bring to it, ah. you know, within the confines of the choreography. So you can. You can so bring you can. newness in you something can. old. And freshness. And doing so many performances, you had to find that. But that was wonderful because you had the ability to play with your performance. So it wasn't like it's it's difficult here because we only have four performances. So yeah. so there's a lot by the time we load into the theater, oh, in and the then you, you every performance you have to make sure that you're doing whatever is is being right. done. And so there's a lot riding on it. So I know nerves are high. Sure. How do you feel about the concept? Let's go back to your personal life and um, mm -hmm. how traditional of an upbringing did you have and your values on that? My mother took me to ballet when I was age three. Okay. Her best friend was a ballet teacher and so I trained at a very young age as, as much as you can do when you're three years old. Mm -hmm. But I continued on until it was difficult to continue the um, lessons and it wasn't affordable, so I had to stop taking ballet classes in my training, and I went into something that, I mean, that was a change, and having to make the best of it, 
I became a cheerleader for the, <laughs> the rest of those years. <laughs> That's the little opposite of that. So you, yeah. I had to give up that dream. Right. I had to give up that dream of dancing in a company because it was not affordable and the situation didn't. Um, okay, so giving lend up a itself. dream, what does that mean? Because that sounds quite heart shattering for a lot of people who believe no, in dreams. I think that I've always decided to make the best out of what the situation was. And I think I talked to you a little bit earlier is that you have to make sure that what's around you doesn't control you. And I, as I told you so many times, I've had situations where things have changed and for good, for bad, and then you have to dust yourself off and make the most of it. And, and I try and teach that to the students that I have that you don't always get what you want. Yeah. You, and what you have to do is, as I work said, harder. work harder or decide to do something different if you feel like that's not for you. And But you can't pin your whole life on one thing mm. and be disappointed. It doesn't, you know, it what doesn't What was the biggest change itself. you had to face in your life that not necessarily was for the better? I um, was married and, <laughs> okay. I, okay, that was a big change. I mean, I, I grew up in Chicago. I was in Arizona going to school at the University of Arizona. Uh -huh. I uh, ended up marrying someone that was from Memphis, Tennessee, and okay. we had a child. Um, and after five years, I was presenting flowers to Rudolf Nureyev and oh. um, Fontaine. Wow. And I was backstage looking at them, they were doing Swan Lake, and I thought, there's something that is missing in my life. Huh. So I started taking adult class, getting back into shape, and I started dancing with a company that was in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay. And um, then from there, dancing a lot didn't lend itself to a Which marriage. Which valley was That this? was Potticot, Carlotta Greasy, but that was in Atlanta. Okay. Atlanta Ballet. Right. So I went to Atlanta. I was dancing with a company, and I went to Atlanta to be with a friend who was auditioning for the company, and Robert Barnett hired me. And so I was faced with, do I move? You know, with my daughter. Ah, crossroads. That, I, that was a crossroad that I had to do. And the person that I happened to be with said, if you don't do that, you will never realize all that you're capable of doing. Wait, so your husband at the time allowed you to choose that path? No, I was actually separated at the time. Okay. And so, and, and we were uh, so on the way that. to being divorced. So it was, and what he said was that you'll never realize your potential until you try. Well, isn't that nice that he had the he support for you? He understood that. Yes. That was missing in my life. So my daughter and I packed up and went to Atlanta, you know, with our sheepdog. <laughs> How old was your daughter at the time? My daughter was seven. Okay. Yeah. Did she know what the concept of change was going to be for her? For moving I, like that? I think she was so young and yeah. she did love to dance. So that was a part of, we lived in uh, Buckhead, which the studio was right there. So right. we were able to be a part of that um, whole group and it was a wonderful family that that I had in Atlanta. Do you remember leaving the moment you left your oh, it was home? Very, it was very difficult yeah, to leave sure. to family and friends and, and in Memphis but it was it a new is. adventure and, yeah. and so and I had my daughter and my right. sheepdog and so off we went. <laughs> yeah sometimes you have to throw yourself That's into right. something. I when know. I moved to Hawaii I had lived in Hong Kong for 25 years and people back home would be like why why is something wrong? People don't understand that you are actively pursuing something because change is good. Sometimes people want the comfort oh, of yes. being the same. Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> For certain. So, what were the um, the biggest challenge of, of change at the time? Finding a place that was secure okay. and um, near the studio and knew the school that my daughter was going to be attending. So we had to do that. She loved horses as well. Mm -hmm is dancing so in the area that we were in Atlanta which was a suburb I know it's changed now after the Olympics sure. that um, it was a uh, you know all within 15 minutes what of year one another. was this or years 75 okay, I so was, was with Atlanta the... Ballet 75 to 85 so you didn't have any segregation issues or anything like that no this was like way no past when that. I first moved to Memphis there that was when Martin Luther King was assassinated so there, I was there later than than the times where it was black and white, yeah, colored right. and, and white, which was, I never, 
even living in Chicago, I never felt right. like there was any that. prejudice. And so I'm fortunate to have grown up in a family that wasn't prejudiced and was very understanding that, you know, we're all the same on the inside and doesn't make any difference. Really. I don't mean to bring politics into this, but with Trump here, do you fear any type of I don't. I don't fear that. No, I think for that the, the I think the change for the country is going to be really a good. I think hmm. that's my opinion. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> change is good. Yeah, it it's is going to bring out things. It where is we good have that to maybe out. wasn't going the right way, and so we'll see. And right. I, I have great expectations for these next four years. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we've got positive change <laughs> on the table here. Yes. So moving forward. So you went from Atlantic City. Atlanta, Atlanta um, with the ballet, and why did you move to Hawaii? What brought you that change? Well, my mother was going through a bout with cancer, oh, sorry. and um, I went to be with her on our layoff. We always had a layoff after the season was finished, and so my daughter went to be with her father, and so I, I went to be with my mother. She was in Arizona, and so I stayed there, and my sister had saved pictures of Ronnie Tong, who is now my husband for 31 years, Aww. and he was playing polo in Oak Brook. And I was in just graduating from high school, and so we dated for a year, and then we um, broke you apart because path. his father was hurt in the polo accident in Kapiolani Park. And so things changed drastically for him, and, and so we were uh, separated for 20 years. And I was single at the time in, in, a, in Atlanta. So I was going through all of the relationships that I had done incorrectly or what went <laughs> wrong with this but or that. maybe the wrong was right. I mean, it <laughs> yeah. helped you define what you want. So my sister had all these pictures because I think she had a crush on, on my now husband, oh, Ronnie. Okay. So there were all these pictures of him playing polo in Oak Brook, which is right outside where I lived uh -huh. in, in Chicago. Okay. And um, so I was like, well, call him and see what he's doing, you know, and I was, you were encouraging, I was her. encouraging her to call. Right. And so he was going through a divorce himself huh. and I, he was helping me to, to get through the illness of my mother. Right. So we talked for months and after all the nutcrackers, I came out here, and it was New Year's, and uh, I got off the plane, and after 20 years, he had less hair, and I had more wrinkles, <laughs> but especially after all those performances yeah. in, um, it's in Atlanta. So we had a long-distance relationship back and forth for um, two years, and then I had to make the choice to leave Atlanta Ballet that I loved. I loved the director. I loved the repertory because we... We had so many wonderful ballets that I was able to dance, and I had to decide this change in my life. Big one. At that point in my life where I was working in the artistic um, section, I was ballet mistress for mm. the director as well as jumping into the ballets that I knew. So I was on the side of my career that was going into the teaching and directing Right. at that point in time. So you really were, it was a, a real torn decision. It was. But the, that's life. That was. You know, putting something very strong on your table and to choose. I'm making the decision to move yes. to Hawaii. And um, it was quite a change because my husband had four children. And so I became a stepmother. <laughs> All, this is like something out of a ballet. Like, it was it's like Green Acres, you know. Wow. I, I came to Tong Ranch and it was, everything was green because that was the color of his um, polo colors. Okay, okay. And You're thrown it, into uh, a it whole was actually a cattle ranch. Was it more than you bargained for? It was uh, certainly an eye-opening experience and right. I used to wear white in the city and so that's why I always wear black because after being at the ranch with red dirt. I realized oh, okay, was, see there's always a reason for everything. I love that. Pam, we're going to take a quick break okay. and it's interesting to hear how a relationship kind of affects your decisions or, or maybe even the stability of you as a, as a person, as a performer, as an artistic director. It all, all kind of combines together, doesn't it? Yes. So we'll come back and we'll continue talking to Pam about her life in the ballet world and why she decided to change the Nutcracker this year. <laughs> Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. 
Aloha, I am Reg Baker and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Aloha Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Marriage life, but okay. <laughs> so back with Pam Tong from Valley Hawaii here talking about the concept of tradition and change. Now when I say that it's because Nutcracker has always been a most loved tradition, Christmas tradition, and this year uh, Pam on behalf of Valley Hawaii decided to do a little tweak. That's the least we can say about that. Well, this is Valley Hawaii's 40th anniversary, 40th year. The company right. was originally started by former mayor Frank Fossey, and it was um, done with the CETA funds that were um, given for the salaries for the dancers. But the board of directors was formed because the city could not actually um, take money out to buy point shoes and costumes. Aww. So it was, it was the training program, the CETA funds, that were okay. set up. And so that's how Mayor Fossey felt like no city could com okay. be complete without dance. Good. Thank Good goodness. Good for him, yes. And, so before um, that, there was really not much of a there, not that I Not that I know okay. of, but, but he felt like that would, would be a necessary Right. Um, company to to fund. So he, after a number of years, the company wasn't able to sustain the salaries for all of the dancers because it is a great a great cost. So they were um, disbanded, but the board of directors stayed on, and so that still the board of directors that I work with. Okay. So backtrack a little bit. Is that when you came to Hawaii for your love of your life? Yes. You. How did you come across um, Valley Hawaii? Where did they pursue you to become their? I had worked with one of the dancers, Nicholas Bacana, who is the one of the original company members of Honolulu City Ballet, and so that was something that I naturally went to visit. The um, they were in the YOET room and the um, gymnasium. Okay. And so I had worked with a number of uh, choreographers, Sonia Arava and Tor Sukowski, with the Atlanta Ballet. And so they were doing Cinderella. Mm. And so I came to be in the gymnasium with them. Were you helping. still performing at the time? I was, I had given that up because oh, but when I moved to Hawaii, then I, um, I, I thought I'd re retired, and I, I didn't intend. <laughs> I love that. I thought I retired. <laughs> I thought I was done with that, but no. I know. Going okay? to a new chapter of yes. my life, and then so I started teaching 12 little dragonflies from oh. Cinderella, a warm-up class, before they did their rehearsal, and I was helping Tonya, uh, Sonia and Tor with the production that was going to be um, at Christmas instead of Nutcracker. Oh. So that was a deviation from what was usually done. Huh. And do you have, sorry, do yes. you have a favorite ballet? I'm just curious. I do, and that was Serenade that I did with New York City Ballet. Uh -huh. And um, oh, those are pictures. <laughs> Look at that. Do you remember? It was that. So this was Ballet Hawaii when you came over here. To, this to, it was to yes, have and ones. we were in so many different studios, and oh, not right. the studios that you know now of right. you and your daughter Red. Right. It was um, we we moved many shift. a time from Wiley Tea Room to the Chinese Cemetery. We were <laughs> over on University Avenue. Then we went. Um, many what do you different mean? places. There's a cemetery. There was like a room for you to. There was a school there, and oh. um, there were actually it was a wonderful place because it was right. You should do Giselle there. Oh, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. At <laughs> night, we have a midnight performance right outside. Yeah, well, it was kind of scary. Yeah, no, it was I right at the creepy. edge of the. But no, it was a wonderful place, and you could see the waterfall, right. and, and uh, that was lovely. So well, The thing about ballet, though, I'm sorry to interject yes. all the time, but there's a beauty, the, the stories behind, if people don't understand ballet, if you can look into 
the, the, the stories underneath all that beautiful dance, there's a really a lot going on there. Yeah. It's yeah. Historical, yeah. artistic. And it's a, it's a universal language, so you don't need to know anything about dance as you sit in the audience and, and it's the yeah. excitement and it has to touch your soul. That's why Absolutely. when also I teach the children, they have to know how to project and connect with the audience. Otherwise, they're a robot. They That's could right. be, they could just be, uh, you know, some sort of animation yeah. and not really so there. True. And I think that's what is exciting about the privilege of working with a symphony. Oh, and yes. they have the music oh, coming from the pit music. that is so glorious. And it's different, a little bit different every time. So they have to listen instead of working with a CD. So that's an experience oh, for but them. There's nothing like that energy. Now, all the years that you've done so many nutcrackers, do you have a favorite part you played? Because I know there's a picture, I believe, of you doing the Arabian. As Arabian. And oh, the, that? the Arabian was something that I did with the uh, choreographer for the version that. that we've been doing for many years, uh -huh. Tom Pasek. Uh -huh. His choreography we used prior to this this last year and that was the Balanchine oh. set and, and how version. How do you feel when you look at pictures like that of you in those days? <laughs> what, do you, what do you feel? What do I feel? Yeah. The joy of having done that. I mean, Good. I love that role. It was something that was uh, it's such a exciting. sensual role. Yeah, and the music is so incredibly it's beautiful. It's enticing. Yes. It's intoxicating. And the partnership really. and um, that, yes. that I had. So that was that was wonderful, you yeah. know. I, and I didn't have to wear point shoes for all those all right. uh, that month long series. We always I always did the um, main mother and snow oh, okay. and then Arabian. So I got but to take Arabian, off my point shoes. You have to be very nimble, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think nimbleness is something that is that you again. Mm -hmm. It's the same. That's the same thing. It's the same one. Oh, okay, in color. color. Right. 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 Look at look at your muscles. <laughs> Just like oh, that was, wow. That it's was gorgeous. a while ago. <laughs> but no. Is that a photo? It looks almost like a painting, like a rendition of it, but it is a photo, isn't it? It, it, it just is did a photo, to and the sets, it's just the it's other gorgeous. one wasn't in color, and those right. were our okay. sets that we had. But too. Pam, don't you think that the beauty of the nimbleness and the grace of a ballet dancer kind of translates to life? You know, it's the best metaphor of how you need to be kind of flexible in life when That's change true. comes. That's true. I mean, I was always more flexible than I was as far as strong. So, ah. I mean, the strength I had to develop as far as inner, right. inner self. Right, right, right. And you take that with you. I was more flexible. <laughs> so <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. So, I mean, at my body type, I was, as I said, more flexible, and I had to really work harder on strength. But as a person? Do you think you're flexible, or do you actually are stronger? I think I'm a people pleaser, you okay. know, a, a lot of the time. But then when I get backed up into a corner, you know, I will fight for what I know is right. And at the same time, you need to be stern with all these girls running around, girls and boys. You know, you, you have to kind of keep that. You see, core. I think that I, I need a balance, yes, and Septim Weber has brought that to. So tell us who Septim is. Yeah. Septim Weber is a choreographer for our new Nutcracker. Mm. And is this this year's that uh, rehearsal? Is this year, and he was rehearsing. In the summer, we didn't do a uh, production, which we usually do a mm. full length. What we did is we workshopped in our summer intensive the choreography, and Septim just has the knack of pulling all those dancers together. He brings out the best in them. They mm. and see I came I did better as in a nurturing background with teachers. I felt like I gave more when I was in a nurturing atmosphere, but not all students need that. Sometimes they need that strict discipline and and not, you know, not so nice, a drill sergeant. And is, so is I like the balance. He's he's wonderful. He's very kind, though. But in this, his choreography, of course, that he knows what he wants, and he's going to get the most out of each and every one of the people that are in that cast. You he's know, got, sometimes when I come to pick a bread and I just look at little glimpses of the rehearsal, yes. there is just a storm of energy yes. that I oh, feel yes. even from outside the glass because from he's putting and from something into, and the girls <laughs> are just following, and they're just like a, this flurry of snow. Snowflakes, like in the Nightcracker. Yes, and he's 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 not satisfied until they give their hundred percent and more, and that is the beauty of that. I can be then nurturing, and then he can be the strict father type that um, will bring the most out. But so you do need balance, don't you? You do. You do. You need balance, and because a lot of that, and if you have a drill sergeant all the time, they lose their their spirit. That's right. And you can't you can't 
take that out because that's what comes forth in the but performance that people connect with. I'm glad you said that because the art, art, the art of ballet, on one hand, is so disciplined, so yes. focused. And but if you to. don't have that little mm -hmm. bit of passion or that spark that comes out of something that's individual, and didn't you say that about your daughter when she was... She went to Shanghai Ballet and it really just almost killed her spirit because mm -hmm. they just wanted to drill. Everyone was the same. God forbid you have your own personality. Mm -hmm. it's scary, but it's interesting culturally that everyone has different ways to deal with their core values. Right, and you build the technique that way. Yes. And so, but if you break their spirit, you know, you, it's funny, it's my, my husband always trained horses too. And he uh -huh. said, well, you can't put the bridle in too soon because you don't want to break their spirit and you have to have that ha. energy and that that um, I, I, I wish guess I had those photos of you Pam <laughs> how do you keep the spirit in like a traditional piece like uh, Nutcracker while changing it because you didn't even talk about the change let's yes. talk a little bit about the this change. change is very exciting because when we were uh, embarking upon our 40th year anniversary I wanted to do something that was related to Hawaii set in Hawaii okay. and so 1858 Mary Dominus had um, given the first Christmas party with a huge tree and um, she and her son John Owen Dominus um, were in the home and so that was a natural when Septine and I walked into it the first Christmas we were the, uh, the whole story of Nutcracker unfolded because we found out Mary Dominus lost her sea captain husband and she had to take in boarders so therefore, Council General um, is going to appear, the father and Clara and Fritz and the grandfather. So they are the okay. boarders that are in the governor's mansion, Washington Place. Wow. And the whole story unfolded. It takes place there. And so from the battle scene, if you stand outside or did at that period of time, you could see all the way to the ocean. So that's how the battle scene is. Uh, the pirates are coming out of the ship. And we have a wonderful um, dolls that are, it, it's all set in 1858. So there's a Pueo doll that is normally the soldier <laughs> variation. Great. And a hibiscus bud opens. Pam, because of the limited time, okay. I'm going to have people go and buy tickets to see Nutcracker. But yes. what would you like to say to people with what you have and what you want to bring to? I think that this Nutcracker is going to be the most incredible Nutcracker they have ever seen. And they will love the whimsy, their relationship to the um, Hawaiian Islands, the beauty of a lush tropical garden, and uh, our snow scene is set up on top of the um, island, Hawaii Island, oh. of Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa in the wow. background with a beautiful moon. So that's why our snow and is set. And when does it start? It's next week. It starts on the 16th, mm -hmm. uh, 7.30, 17th, 7.30, and also 2 p.m. That's our last performance. And so. again, Folks, this is the first change, the revamped traditional Nutcracker set in Hawaii, beautiful yes. Hawaii. So yes. please go and see it. Beautiful and, guest dancer. Yes. Oh, so <laughs> thank you so much for thank your time. You, Very Crystal. interesting life. Thank and you. good luck with the program. Thank you.